No lightning. No lightning. We don't want it. We don't mind a little sprinkle, but uh, no lightning. Well, so yeah, we're, this, this is a great day, a great day of renewal. This has been the series that we've been on titled Renewal, um, and we've been um, talking about what it means to renew a lot of different areas of our life, and we, we put the baptism today because that is such a symbol of renewal, renewal in commitment to following Jesus Christ as Savior. And so what a great way to wrap up the series that we've been going through with the act of coming to God and, and recognizing that um, we can come to God as our Lord and Savior and celebrating with those who are experiencing a renewal today, who have re- experienced renewal in their life through the saving power of Jesus Christ. So throughout this whole series, we've been kind of talking about following the, in the footsteps of the kingdom of God, following in Christ's footsteps and what that means in various areas of our life. And we can be, we can be molded and shaped by the world. Uh, there's a whole lot of people out there right now, and they're being molded and shaped by the world. Or we can be molded and shaped by the kingdom of God and by the grace that comes through Jesus Christ. And so that's what we've been talking about over the last few weeks. And we have to ask, where, what do we, who do we want? What do we want to mold and to shape us? That's a question we all have to ask. And as believers in Jesus Christ, we need to continually be mindful and be asking that question. We're going to look at that today. The world, the world is going to offer us a little bit, a short period of time, and then the consequences of that are literally deadly. The kingdom of God is going to move in the opposite direction of the world, which may not feel fun, and you're going to have people who are going to really question, well, why are you making those choices? Why are you doing that? Why do you spend your day and your, your morning on a, going to a place on Sunday morning when you could be free doing other stuff? Why, why do you devote yourself to looking after the needs of others when really, you know, we, we should be kind of looking after our own needs? And so the kingdom of God is going to move in an opposite direction from the world, but the long-term results are life. And so if we just look at a basic picture, follow the world, be molded by the world, short term, it may seem fun, and it may seem enjoyable, but the long-term results are deadly. Following the kingdom of God, we may actually have some people push against us and what we believe and how we're living, but the long-term results bring true life. And again, that's what we're going to see and witness today through the act of baptism, transformation, renewal into life. Well, we've been reading a um, sep- section of Scripture, Romans chapter 12, 1 through 8, for the last couple weeks. It's sort of been our theme that we've been looking at, that we've been all over the, the Scriptures, but we want to read that one last time together as the body of Christ in this series. I'm sure over the years we'll read it again, but today we'll read it one last time for this series. And so why don't you stand as we read the, the Word of the Lord together? And it'll be up there on the screen for us. There we go. Here we go. Romans 12, 1 through 8. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Instead, think sensibly, as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. Now, as we have many parts in one body... And all the parts do not have the same function. In the same way, we who are one, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. According to the grace given to us, we have different gifts. 
If prophecy, use it according to the proportion of one's faith. If service, use it in service. If teaching, in teaching. If exhorting, in exhortation. Giving with generosity. Leading with diligence. Showing mercy with cheerfulness. All right, you may be seated. Renewal. Renewal. We started week one basically asking, what kind of church experience do you want to have? What kind of church do you want to be? And we looked at sort of how the word church has morphed over the years and kind of modern day, uh, it's, we, we kind of uh, you use this, this German phrase that kind of caught on as they were doing some translations of the scriptures um, uh, many, 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 many years ago. This idea of uh, Kirke, which is the house of the Lord. And we kind of gr- have gravitated towards that idea of this is what the church is, the house of the Lord. And that sounds really great. Yes, we want to come and we are gathered together and consider this the house of the Lord where we, we come and worship and praise Him. But the original meaning of church, when Jesus says, I'm going to start my church, you're going to be my church, it was ecclesia, the gathering of Christ's people. And all the, every time that Jesus talks about gathering and the direction of the church and the mission of the church, there's always this emphasis on we're going to go, we're going to do, we're going to go, we're going to go into the world, we're going to make disciples. It's, it's movement, it's motion. And so this, was, this is the kind of church we have to decide what do we want to be? We could, we could stand here and we could raise our hands and say, yeah, we want to vote. We want to be Kirke. We want to just be the house of the Lord. It only happens when we come here on Sundays. That's it. That's all we are. But when churches do that, when churches do that model, that way of functioning, they tend to shrink and shrink and shrink because we start to think about our own preferences, our own desires, what we want to see happen. And that kind of church doesn't bring life. Or Ecclesia, say, no, we're, we're a church on the move. We come and gather. We come and pray. Thank you, Steve, for leading us in a prayer time this morning. We pray. We worship. We fellowship. We do all those things, but we see a greater picture for the church. Ecclesia, a church on the move, a church that has momentum, a church that is concerned with walking outside these doors and recognizing and seeing the people on the street. That was the whole exercise of last week's reverse offering. Please, if you have not been able to bless someone yet with that gift that came in the envelope, please do that. It'll bring you joy as well as bringing some other people joy as well. And I've heard a couple testimonies. Anybody have a testimony of, of sharing that, that gift with someone in the community? Anybody have a chance to do that? I want to be bold and, and give a testimony of how there was some impact? say my story's not finished yet because I took it and uh, I have a llama day once a week with our youngest granddaughter. I'm llama. And uh, <laughs> we went to Santa's Village and I thought it would be great to have her part of that. So it, on the drive to Santa's Village I said we're going to pray in the car and I described what was going to happen. And that we were just going to be looking and having discernment on who we could give this gift to and you know, tell them is there something we could pray for you for or whatever. Yeah. Um, and as the day went, you know, I'm thinking, okay, Lord, you know, this is a teachable moment. It's going to be a win-win. We're going to bless somebody and also, you know, train up our, the young ones to show this act of service. Um, and just the day just kept going and going. And I would say, hmm, you know, there's somebody we, I would say maybe. But she, would, she kept saying, well, no, they don't look discouraged enough. <laughs> so, so it was really neat, though, that she was looking for someone just to really boost them, you know, and, and so we're, it's on hold, but we're still praying. Still praying, still yeah. praying, yeah. Still praying. I'd encourage folks to get out there and do that. Amelia, you shared on Thursday uh, where you were able to bless uh, a friend of yours who was struggling physically through some surgeries, still recovering, and it's really been a long term. And this, this friend of yours was just so grateful and was, was teary-eyed because they, they were just at the end of the rope, very discouraged. So, had a great testimony there. Anybody else have, has we had it? Um, I have a young um, single mom who's raising three godly daughters. Um, and she um, very, uh, a little frustrated and discouraged. She bought a house this summer and a fixer upper and she's still in the process of fixing it up. And Steve and I prayed and, and both of us felt that that was where we were supposed to do it. So I was able to 
um, give it to her, and she just truly saw it as a blessing from Jesus and was so appreciative of it. And uh, it will probably go into the house repair, but um, but it was just one further assurance that God loves her, and she yep. saw it definitely as such. Yep. Yep. And this is this is meant to have to go into the community and to have our eyes open. We have something we can give. That's the challenge. We have more than just what was in the envelope to give. Right. We have help of Jesus Christ. That's where we want to get to uh, with people who don't know him. But the, the, the challenge with that reverse offering was, okay, let's have our eyes open. And so we have eyes open into the community. But where are these needs? Who am I recognizing? Who am I seeing? And not just passing by as I'm walking through life, which is so easy to do. So we talked about that, having our eyes open for community, talking about witnessing. Jens brought a great message on witnessing and, and sharing our faith with those people in our community, which is great, and, and being renewed in that, being renewed in that, finding renewal in that, renewal in our personal walk with the Lord. Maybe it's grown stale. Maybe, maybe we've, we've grown stale with the Lord, and, and so what does that look like to renew that walk? Our giftings, our ministries, we, we talked about that as well. So the big question as we finish this up is, do we really want to see renewal for ourselves in our own walk with the Lord, but as a church, as a body, uh, do we want to see renewal, which will then affect the community that we walk through? If you're a follower of Jesus, you've already taken steps into the kingdom, right? Follower of Jesus, we are in God's family. But again, the question, are we walking with the Lord? Are we we're seeking that renewal, that daily renewal? We're going to talk about that later on. If you're not a follower of Jesus, there are some big decisions to make. Jesus says, as he's teaching those around him, you've got to count the cost. Uh, you've got to pick up your cross. That's, that's heavy stuff. It's not to be taken lightly. This is why we love baptism, because it's such a picture, it's a representation that, yes, I am choosing to follow Jesus, and, I'm, and you're my witnesses as I go down in the water and I come back up, that I am a follower of Jesus. I am making that commitment to Jesus. We're going to kind of come full circle here as we, we talk about uh, the, the topic for the day, the message of the day. We're we're going to go back to Romans 12, 1 through 2, and it's kind of where we started when we, we read Romans 12, 1 through 8. We're going to go back to Romans 12, 1 through 2, as we circle around uh, on this, this subject. And if you've got a Bible, pull that out. If you've got a phone, uh, pull that out. If you want to read the scriptures on a, a Bible app there, some of the scriptures will be on the screen. Um, uh, so you can follow along that way as well. Romans 12, 1 through 2 says this, Therefore, brothers and sisters... In view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. I want to focus this morning on this idea of presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. If we're not willing to do this, then all the stuff that we talked about through the, 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 the previous weeks is just going to fall by the wayside. He says, therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercies, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Sacrifice. This word present uh, could have a, a number of different meanings. It's, he says present here. It could mean offer. Uh, we'll see that a little later. It could also mean yield. I want to talk about yielding today. What does it mean to yield ourselves to God? So as we talk about present our bodies, yielding ourselves to God as a living sacrifice. Yield has a couple of different meanings. Yield can mean to, to give way. You may think of this as you're like driving your car, and you're driving your car, and you come to a stop, and maybe some pedestrians are, are crossing the road, and what do you do? Well, here in town, in, in Littleton, we yield for the pedestrians. And man, you got to be careful, don't you? Those green stripes where people walk, man, you got to stop and, and watch these people coming across the, across the street, uh, all these tourists coming across the street. Uh, we want them to come back. 
Uh, so we, we yield. As we're driving, we, we yield. We yield to those who are walking by. Or you come to a stop sign, a four-way stop or whatever, and you maybe yield to someone else to go first. We yield ourselves to God so that God's instructions, His desires, they are in the forefront. They are coming through and not us. We are not charging through. You can come to a, a stop sign and you can have other people coming to a four-way stop as well. And you can, you can just go and be aggressive and boom, I don't care. I just got to go and, and plow right through. But this is, we're going to yield. We're going to yield ourselves to God so that His instructions, His desires are there at the forefront. In, in uh, chapter 12 of Romans we, we transform, or the renewing of our mind, it's like we're, we're, we're yielding ourselves to God so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Yield ourselves to God so that we see what His will is, so that we can then follow in that direction. So what yield means to give, give way, to give way. Yield can also mean to produce, to produce. We think of it, the land yields a crop. The land yields wheat or corn or something like that. The, the land produces. The, the land yields a crop. We yield ourselves to God so that God can provide the yield through us. The harvest, the produce, whatever it is, we yield ourselves so that God can then produce through us, through our lives as we're walking in the way that we've talked about these, these last few weeks. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to yield or present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Paul is speaking in temple sacrifice terms. We don't have this today. We've talked about this in the past. We don't have this same kind of sacrificial system. Uh, but you go back to this first century, and not just the Jewish system, but uh, the, the Romans, the Greeks, they, they were making sacrifices to everyone. You, you find temples on, on all the street corners, all right? And all those temples are saying, hey, come here, come here, come here. Offer a sacrifice here and, and please this deity. Please this God. No, no, no. Come here, come here, come here. Come to this temple. Offer the sacrifice. Please this deity. Please this God. If you do it here, you're going to do it right, and this guy's going to be happy, or this, this, uh, this goddess is going to be happy do it over here. No, 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 this is the right, this is what you're going to do. And so he's talking in, in sacrificial system language. And uh, his, his Jewish brothers and sisters would have also been familiar with this, because what did they do at the temple in Jerusalem? They offered sacrifices, lots and lots and lots of sacrifices throughout the years, offering lots and lots of daily, yearly sacrifices to the Lord. And so they would have been very familiar with this idea of what is a sacrifice. Now they were taking a lamb, a dove, grain, oils, or whatever, putting it up on there on the altar, having the priest bless it and, and do what needs to be done. The lamb, the dove, the grain, whatever, it was not getting on the altar by itself, right? They were having to do something, prep it, get it on that altar. Paul says, our lives are now that living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, because we keep on living, and daily we are to present ourselves as a living sacrifice to our God. It means, he's saying, guess what, guys? You got the altar of your life? You're going you're gonna to climb on this thing each and every day and give your life to the Lord for His work, His purposes, His desires each and every day. When we come to Christ, it is a, such a, a real act, a real experience. Being a living sacrifice daily is also a very real experience. I've known folks over the years who, yeah, I, I committed my, Christ, my, life to, my life to Jesus, or you know what, my family's always gone to church and always been Christian, but you know, I just kind of do my own thing now. Is that what Paul would be talking about when he's talking about a living sacrifice? Some, you know, somewhere in the past, I, I gave my life to Jesus, but now I kind of do my own thing, and that's all right, because I've got, I've got security and I've got insurance, or again, my folks have always gone to church, and so I feel like I'm just kind of in that family, in that, in that party, 
That's not what Paul's talking about here. He's talking about daily sacrifice. And this is, this is why this is hard stuff. This is why this is serious stuff. This is why we have to make some choices. We have to make some choices. Are we willing to yield ourselves to God's plans and desires? And this is all, this is not, I hope this is not going to be a, a downer message. Uh, there, there's so much joy. Pa, uh, Steve prayed about the, the freedom we find in Christ. The freedom that he wants to give us. The joy that he wants to provide to us. But again, following God's kingdom looks different than the world. And there's going to be some push and shove on that. Some friction on that as we are living here on this earth. But it's a real act, a real act of, of putting ourselves on that altar each and every day. As I look at this verse, I think about, you know what, this is the, this is the first thing we do in, during the day. I don't know what your routine is. You get in the shower, you drink your coffee, you have breakfast, or whatever it may be. Uh, this, as we're rolling out of bed, do we consider our first act to come to God and say, you know what, God, I give this day to you. This is the day I have. These are the hours I have. Lord, these are all yours. Going back to last week, are my eyes open? Are my ears open to hear what the Lord will do each and every moment of that day? Now, we're not going to neglect work. We're not going to neglect family, anything like that. We're not going to huddle ourselves on the corner of our bed and just, okay, Lord, just bring it, bring it, bring it. That's not, the, that's not what we're saying here. But it's, Lord, I'm going to put myself on that altar, giving my day to you. Lord, show me. Let me hear. Let me experience what you have for my life. It's a, it's a, it's a real act. It's a defining act. We're, we're transferring our life to God. We're saying it's no longer I who live, it's Christ who lives in me. This is what we're doing. I am, I am, I am dead. Romans 6.13 says this, And do not offer any parts of it to sin as weapons for unrighteousness, but as those who are alive from the dead, offer yourselves to God and all your parts to Him. Alive. How are we alive? We're alive because of Christ Jesus. We're alive because of the gift that Christ has offered to us. Offer yourselves to God. Again, there's that word, offer, present, yield ourselves to God. It's a transforming experience. It's a, it's a worshipful act. Paul says this in, in uh, verse 1, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Chapter 12, verse 1, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. This is how we worship. We say, Lord, I want to do your will. Man, today's the day. I get to jump out of bed. Today's the day. God, today's the day. This is how I start my worship to you. It's like climbing up on top of that altar, offering myself to you. If we want to have victory in life, if we want to truly succeed in life, we need to direct ourselves, yield ourselves to the one who actually can give us victory and help us succeed right, who can, who can bring life in each and every act, each and every step that we take. Again, excited, doing baptism today, seeing lives that are being yielded to Christ, saying, I want to take steps for you, Jesus. I want to take steps for you. This is how we worship. Now, one thing about being a believer in Christ is we, we, we kind of have this dual nature now, all right? He, he says that you are a new creation. We are a new creation in Christ, which is wonderful. We have new life in Christ. We are a new creation. We are part of his family, part of his kingdom. But guess what? We still live here. And tell you what, does anybody here not sin? We're new creation, but does anybody here not sin? No, no. Everybody here sin? Everybody here still kind of fall off every once in a while, do something that wouldn't be pleasing to God or that would hurt a neighbor or that would hurt a friend or, or a family member. And even if it's not intentional, if it doesn't seem big, we, we all still wrestle with sin because we have this new nature, but we still have the old. And this is why the scriptures say, you know, we're, we're putting on the robes of Christ. We're putting on, uh, that's the picture Continually putting on, this again, you know, if we're putting on Christ's robes each and every day, again, it's giving ourselves to Christ each and every day. It's the living sacrifice, climbing on top of that altar 
every single day because, God, my desire is to serve you, and I want to experience the joy that you have to offer. I don't want to miss that. I want to experience the peace that you have to offer. I don't want to miss that. I want to experience the job that you have me to do. I don't want to miss that. Even if it means I'm going to struggle a little bit. The lost person only has one nature, the old man. I I kind of like how Augustine um, wrote it many, many, many centuries ago. He, he did something. He put together kind of his view of the nature of man. Pre-fall, when it was Adam and Eve, think Adam and Eve, you know, we, had the, we were able to sin, obviously. We, we see the choices that they make, but we were able to not sin as well. They didn't have to eat the fruit. They chose to eat the fruit and walk away from God. Think of Adam and Eve there. Post-fall, man, this is the state of our friends and family who don't know Christ. The reality is they're able to sin and unable not to sin, mean, meaning there's no life that's going to come from the way and the path that they're, they're walking down. We were, we were dead. We are dead to God. Dead to God. Everything we do basically falls in that category of, of sin because we are separated from God. But then we were reborn. We were transformed. And again, we're able to, uh, we, we can fall, we can stumble, we can make choices that go against God's will and His desire, but we can also follow Him and live a holy and righteous life as well, with working through the power of the Holy Spirit there. And so we, here we are, we, we see our original state, we see where, those, where we were, and we see where a lot of our friends and family may be right now, and we see now where Christ has taken us when we're actually able to do His will, walk by the power of the Spirit and not by our own flesh. This is, this is what happens when we are born again. We have a new nature. We have the, the, the filling of the Holy Spirit in our lives, but we still wrestle. We can still wrestle with that old. We can still wrestle with that old stuff. And so maybe there are temptations. Maybe there are things in your life that just you keep tripping on. You keep falling back onto to old patterns. These are the things we lay on the altar and say, Christ, keep working here. I need your help here. I want this to be taken care of. Lord, help me to, to, to burn those things up so they are no longer a temptation and no longer a stumbling point in my life. And believers, we... we we, we live as this new creation, but we, we can still struggle. We have security in Christ Jesus, but while we're here on this earth, we can still struggle and, and fall into sin. Old life, new life, flesh, spirit, a life that follows our own self-interest instead of a, a life that follows Christ's interests and desires. They're enemies. They fight against each other. Flesh and spirit have to fight against each other. We've given our life to Christ. We want to be on that spirit side, allowing the spirit to continue to make us more and more holy as we walk through this life. We have to choose. We have to make choices about who we are going to yield to, who are you going to yield our lives to. And this is an act that because it, there, there's, there, there are enemies, the flesh and the spirit are enemies, there, this is going to be a, a resisting act, an act of resistance. Galatians 5, 16, I say then, walk by the Spirit and you will certainly not carry out the desires of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit. When you walk by the Spirit, you're not going to carry out the desires of the flesh. Meaning, if you're not walking by the Spirit, what are you going to do? We're going to the flesh. We're going to our stuff. We're going to, this, we're going to trip and fall into the same pits that we always trip and fall into. Ephesians 4 says this, Take off your former way of life, the old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires, to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, to, to put on the new self, the one created according to God's likeness and righteousness, purity of the truth. Again, this idea of putting on. I think this is why this is daily. A daily sacrifice on that altar. A living sacrifice. We're, we're, we're not giving up. By putting ourselves on the altar, we're not giving up. We're just wanting to live in the new life that Christ has, has given to us. We, we, we step onto that altar in the morning and say, you know what? 
there were some thoughts. I said some things. Uh, th- this is, this is, these were my plans for the day, and I know they go against your will. Lord, burn those up. Remind me throughout the day to walk in your spirit. Live by your spirit, because that's where I'm going to find the joy, the peace, the freedom that I need. Walk by the Spirit, which means we also can walk the other way as well. Daily surrender ourselves, yield ourselves to what God would have for us. Maybe those idols in your life, again, those places that you fall each and every day. We, we want to stop that. We want to stop that. And this is one of the reasons we gather together to see people who can encourage us, lift us up, build us up. We can worship this Lord, our Lord and Savior together. We can come together saying, you know what? We are not perfect people, but we can come together and lift our voices, raise our voices high to the throne room of God. And we can walk with one another because we are spirit-filled people. And we want to live that spirit-filled filled life. So we have to yield ourselves to God. Romans 6, 6 through 13 says this, and not everything's up there from this passage, so I'm going to read it, but here's a, a snapshot. For we know that our old self was crucified with him. Our old self was crucified with Jesus so that the body ruled by sin might be rendered powerless so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin. Since a person who has died is free from sin. What great news. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. Because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all time. But the life he lives, he lives to God, and we are in that life as well. Here he goes, therefore, Paul saying, this is what you do. Laid it out for you. Now, this is what you do. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its desires. Do not offer, there's that word offer, present, yield, again, do not offer any parts of it, uh, any parts of your body to sin as weapons for unrighteousness. Listen to that language. When we walk our own path and we decide, (laughs) I don't care, God, what you say, our actions, who we are, become weapons for unrighteousness. But those who are alive from the dead, that's us, who put our faith in Jesus Christ, offer yourselves to God and all the parts of yourself, all your body parts, your, your whole being. Paul's saying your whole being, not just, not just the, the parts that you want to. And yeah, you know, I mean, I want to keep this stuff secret right in here. This is the stuff I really want to hold on to, all right? Again, we talk about uh, living by the world and having short-term maybe pleasure, it feels like pleasure, but long-term consequences for that. Those who are alive from the dead, offer yourselves to God and all your parts of yourself, selves to God as weapons for righteousness. Weapons for righteousness. As we walk, our actions, our words, what we do, who we are can be used as a weapon of unrighteousness that will continue to hurt and tear down, break down relationships, or they can be used as weapons of righteousness through the power of the Holy Spirit to build, to grow, to invite in, to invite people in to this kingdom of God, to a relationship with Jesus Christ. These are some of the options we have, literally. As a kingdom person, as a kingdom person, we can bring heaven to earth in a sense of we are walking in a righteous life, doing righteous works, using our hands and our feet for Christ's work, or we can bring something else to earth with destruction, tearing things down, seeking my own kingdom, my own power, grabbing what I can grab here in this life to yield ourselves, but to yield all that we are to God. Again, therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Your whole body, all you are, we yield it all. We yield our eyes to God. We yield our ears to God. We yield our hands, our feet, 
to God. We use yield every single part of who we are. What, is it, what does it mean to yield our mouth to God? What does it mean to yield our, those eyes to God? A lot, of, a lot of people, we think, oh, well, it's just i got to make sure I don't watch the wrong things. Also, yielding our eyes to God goes back to last week and like, okay, do I have a vision for what God has a vision for? Yielding my ears, I've got to make sure I listen to the right kind of music. I don't listen to all that bad stuff out there. There's, that's the part of watching what comes in. But also, yielding my ears to God, am I hearing what God wants me to hear? To yield our whole being to God. Yield our knees to God. What does it mean to yield our, our knees to God? Man, people of prayer. It's down on the ground, humbly becoming, coming before our Lord and Savior. I bet we can all think of an area that we haven't yielded to God or that we're having a hard time letting go. Actually, on Thursday, we had a great time during the message here, and we, we shared some stories and some struggles. A small group shared some stories and, and some struggles about yielding various things to God. Very, very powerful. This is, this is our prayer today. What do I need to give to you as I set myself daily as that living sacrifice? I want, I want that old stuff to be burned up. I want it to go away. I want it to go away. I want that new stuff to live. I want that new stuff to be what defines me as I'm, as I'm talking to my neighbor. I want them to see that new stuff. I want them to see life. That, that, that old nature brings death. I don't want them to see death in me. I don't, want to, I don't want to walk into a relationship and, man, man, that guy is such a bummer. He just, he just, he just brings death wherever he goes. He's a killjoy. He kills the atmosphere or whatever. I don't, I don't want that. I want people to say, Man, there is something about him. He's got life. It looks different, but I'm seeing life in him. What is that all about? Uh, let me tell you what that's all about. It's about a relationship with Jesus. Man, he's given me so much freedom, and power, and life. Let me share that with you. Let me share that. What kind of church, what kind of person, what kind of follower of Christ do we want to be? life-giving, or just kind of falling back to those old ways? Are we ready to serve one another? As we're wrapping this up here, are we ready to serve one another, to, to sacrifice for one another? Here we are this morning, lambs ready to present ourselves on an altar to become that living sacrifice for what Christ would have for us to do. Let me see the way you see. Let me hear the way you hear. Let me walk where you want me to walk. Let me, let me use my hands, get my hands in the dirt where you want to get my hands in that dirt to make some change, to bring a yield in this lifetime. This is what we want to do. To seek that holy life that only God can give and we can't do it in our own power. Do we want to see renewal? Do we want to see renewal? Anybody here want to see renewal in our community? We can clap on that. We can clap on that. And God's the one who's waiting to do it. He's just looking for those living sacrifices to do it with. All right, so.